Welcome to the Indie Music Room, a conversation with independent artists about writing, recording, performing, and promoting their original music. And now here's your host, Heather Kelly. Hey everybody, you're listening to Heather Kelly with the Indie Music Room, and I'm very excited to introduce to you my Artist of the Month for August. His name is Andrew Chris from Pittsburgh. Hi Andrew, how are you today? Good, what's cracking? <laughs> Hey, I was just looking forward to talking to you all day. So Yeah, me too, me too. Yeah, this is great, and thank you for joining us. I wanted to let the fans know, I've, I've done the research on you extensively, so I know a lot about you, but why don't you share with their fans a little bit about where you're from and when you started into music, and um, you know, take your time, explain to us studios you've worked in or whatever. So tell me, tell me your story. Well, it all started when I was born. <laughs> oh. um, I, was, I was born in Scranton, actually. I was the only person in my family to be born in Scranton. They're all from like around New York City and everything. Um, there was always like a little piano and a drum set and stuff that I would toy around with growing up. But then one day, one of my sisters wanted to go half son a guitar with me. And by mm -hmm. the time we got it, she didn't want a guitar anymore. So now I had a guitar. This guitar, actually, that we got from Walmart, a first act. You're which I still okay, play I love a good deal. Let me see it real quick. First act. All right. Just the Walmart guitar. There you go. <laughs> which I still use to record all the time, even though I have all these other guitars. There's something about just having a Walmart guitar. But um, anyway, the, the following year, there happened to be a guy by the name of Robbie Walsh that lives about a mile away from me. He played with Noel Redding, who was Jimi Hendrix's bassist in like the 90s, 2000s. Then his, he was on um, American Bandstand with Chubby Checker. I took guitar lessons for maybe like 10 years almost, on, wow. a little on and off, but for a while there, from like fourth grade until high school, I went like once or twice a week. Um, drums, I thought I knew how to play until Rock Band came out, and then I, <laughs> I literally learned how to play drums from Rock Bands, like the yeah. uh, kick pedal. I didn't know how to use the kick pedal. Right. Um, everything else I've just kind of toyed around with myself and used my general music theory knowledge for it, but yeah. Wonderful. That's my story. Now I'm in that's, Pittsburgh. Yeah, that's wonderful. So I did read in your bio that you have worked with multiple bands. You kind of have a sound similar to, what would you say? Depends what song. <laughs> um, my favorite of all time is Jimi Hendrix, because if you're to ask someone, if you're to ask Jimi Hendrix what type of sounds he had, he's yeah. like, I just play really loud blues. But that's not really what genre he is, you know? So I like, I like any group where they could kind of, like Led Zeppelin, for example, they would play the hardest rock song and then play like a folk Irish song right afterwards and being able to be so, like to switch around your genre and stuff. So I would say I'm like alternative, I guess. Okay. Because that's a, a good blanket statement, but I really don't know. What do, you, what do you think? Well, when I listened, I thought there were similarities to the band Cream. That was my opinion. Cream, yep. I don't know. That's just kind of where I was feeling. So. Cream. Oh, there you go. Yep. I, and you know what? I didn't even see that in the background, so I'm not cheating. That's what I thought yep. you sounded like. <laughs> Cream, Eric, Eric Clapton, Jimi Hendrix, David Gilmore, Pink Floyd. Yeah. All of them. When I, was, when I was nine years old, my dad showed me them, and I was like, this is, this is what I want to do. Right. <laughs> yeah. Are you from a musical family? Um... Not really. I have, I have people that are 
able to do music, but for example, I don't know, my dad played drums until a few years ago. There was always one in my house and mm -hmm. I went home for Father's Day and I was like, I'll help you get this broken tree branch down if you go jam with me in the basement. Cause like, I knew he, I knew he did something. Like my mom came in from work one day and he was playing. And then he was like, I think he was kind of like shy to play around me or something. Yeah. He plays and he was like better than most of my friends. So really? I wow. guess that, yeah, somewhere in my family there's music, but I'm the only one that's like actively really playing music. So Okay. Okay. Yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. I get that yeah. completely. Um, what, so I know you've worked, have you worked in studios prior to starting to recording on your own? I mean, what type of studios or where did you record? In um, well, I, I started recording just on this little eight track console that was in my house since like fifth grade. My mom put on a battle of the bands and that was like a, a thing that all the bands could use, but no one mm -hmm. wanted to use it. So it just sat in my basement. I started with that. Um, I would actually bring over friends that didn't play music whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And I'd say, pick a song, I'll do all the instruments, and I'm making you sing this song. And that became the thing to do in eighth grade. Um, right, eighth grade, that's pretty young. Yeah, so then when I, when I got my hands on software, it was much easier to do. Um, mm -hmm. But my first time in a studio was probably sophomore year of college, like 2016 mm -hmm. or so. Mm -hmm. And I've never paid for studio time myself. I've always just paid for like the things I need to do it myself. Yeah. And I've found you pretty much can get those same results. Um, going there, I definitely learned more about like the infrastructure of studios and stuff, but mm -hmm. just having conversations with the people, like the, the audio engineers there and stuff, you get tips and tricks every so often, but I found I was giving tips and tricks to them too. It's the same mm -hmm. thing as like playing guitar with someone, you know? It's you really different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. But I've, I've never recorded my own stuff in like a professional studio, only when I was producing for other people and they would front the money for it because right. that's, that's up to them. And I'll definitely help them with that journey and stuff. But um, right. yeah, I've just built my own studio, honestly. Wonderful. It is very expensive. Um, yeah. I, I was telling Aiden when we spoke earlier, you know, I was, I'm, well, I'm a musician as well, but 15 years of it, I've never had to pay because my producer ha allows me to come in and do it. So it's like, if okay. I had to pay that much, I don't know if I would have got as much done. So, and it's yeah. really nice that you figured out how to do it on your own too. Mm -hmm. What kind of software are you using? I really like Reason the most. I think it's the most well-rounded. Mm -hmm. The past three years has really even made Pro Tools obsolete, in my opinion, because the things that you need to pay, like Melodon, for example, you need to pay like 300 bucks extra to be able to do that in Pro Tools, built mm -hmm. in for free in Reason. Plus, it's, it's very visual, kind of mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm very much like pedal board oriented in my brain, right. the way I like visualize it. So there's a thing called a rack in there that literally is like a pedal board. Yeah. You just right click, edit anything in there. Um, Ableton's cool too. Logic is decent. Um, but Reason, I think, is definitely my favorite. Wonderful. Yeah. I'm gonna let, talk me, let, me, oh, let me ask you a question. Um, yeah. how, did you, how did you get into music too? And what's, what's your backstory for that? Well, uh, I started playing violin classically at a very young age. And then... That led me to church and weddings, which led me to a contemporary church band, which led me to a rock band uh, with that guitar player. So it's just evolved over, well, I'm 45, 45 years. So. Wow, nice. Yeah, yeah, and my dad was very musical as well. He's always been in a band or something. But So you yeah. did you flip from violin to guitar? I couldn't play a guitar if my life depended on it. I'm keyboard, yeah. <laughs> I am keyboard, violin, lead vocals, sometimes I do some percussion, but hmm. you know, mainly singing and violin and piano. Hmm. Thanks for asking. I don't want to hijack your interview. The people want to hear about you, but thanks for asking. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I love, I love, I typically end up being the one asking the questions, so I don't know why. Yeah, <laughs> well, that, that's great. Maybe you should work with me. <laughs> you can ask other questions. So the first song we're going to play today is called Bike. Tell me a little bit about that song and, and what inspired you. Um, that was, God, it was either two summers ago or last summer, because last summer was just a big time warp, 2020. Right. Um, I really like um, biking around Pittsburgh and, like, the river mm -hmm. trails and stuff. It's incredible around here. And um, I think I... 
I just wanted to make like a like a song that kind of like a almost like a fifties ballad that's just go one, two, three, one, two, three, bam, <laughs> bam, stop. Yeah. So I, I sat down and just did that pretty much. And I started with um I think four or five layers of the guitar and ended up adding drums and then um I don't I don't know. That's that's an interesting song because it kind of just happens. I didn't really plan for it. Right. I kind of just had that idea that I wanted to make that kind of song and mm-hmm. before I knew it it was like already there and then it was at the time where the band was practicing the new stuff to play for people and then that song almost was finished as we started to play it more and more live. That's how it has such like a live feeling. Okay. But the, um, the second verse on it, there was um, my friend Juice was in the room as we were practicing it with the bands, just writing it with a Sharpie on a Coors Banquet um, box. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then he came over the ne- like the next week or something and recorded it. Um, All right. Some of the yeah, some yeah. of the good ones come together really quickly like that. So. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, let's share Andrew uh, the bike with everybody, and when we come back, we'll visit some more. So I go, so I go, so I go, and they searching for a glint of light. Hustle to 
till I found me one Bigger grows my appetite I've been shining from the sun, see uh, I just wanna run, I just need to breathe I can't catch my breath, losing track of me I might break before the day does Can't remember what the way was Bike written by Andrew Chris. Now tell me, Andrew, do you uh, collaborate with other writers when you write your songs, or is it just something that you keep a notebook by your bed at night? Um, I like I like putting the the spotlight on them for what they would write in like a verse or mm -hmm. something like that. Sometimes I'll have someone do drums or something, mm -hmm. but normally the music I kind of just put it there and then if there's a spot that I know someone else would sound good on or I just can't think of lyrics for mm -hmm. then I'll kind of shop around for different people um but I'm definitely like a notes person like apple notes in my phone okay you should see my notes it's literally like <laughs> lyrics upon lyrics or just random lists of things like that random word anything that will trigger you right exactly That's yeah right. for a bike it probably was like make a song in three that has a has a long note and then just silence. <laughs> right. So if I ever run out of ideas, I'll just scroll through there and be like, oh, yeah, okay, we could do that. <laughs> exactly. So do you play a lot out live or are you mainly recording right now? Um, it's been tough with uh, COVID because Obviously. we were about to book all these shows and then like we had all this prepared, like <laughs> all these great songs. Um, and then we never got to play them. Oh. And since then, we've we've um, played a lot in my place, mm -hmm. just bringing people over in like jam sessions and then people's backyards and stuff like that, which I've kind of grown to like more than actually playing at shows. I, I agree. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm trying to figure out like where I want to strike that balance because I really like being in the studio the most, mm -hmm. but I also love being on stage because I get to play guitar. Right. And I, it's funny, a lot of people don't realize that I'm mostly a guitarist. But mm -hmm. um, like, for example, most most people thought I was a main, mainly a drummer because I used to play mm -hmm. in uh, Isaiah Small's band as a drummer. People used to see us all over yeah. and they didn't even know that I had my own music or played guitar at all. So when I when I play at shows, they come up to me and they're like, aren't, aren't you the drummer? Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. But I, no, I really like in the studio because all of the music I really like is very much like Led Zeppelin, uh -huh. studio based, multi tracking stuff like that. I think it's just magical to like see it come together, and I just love spending my my time doing that. You know. Well, I want to congratulate you because July 9th you had a new release called Floating. I did. Talk I did. about that a little bit. That one is another one that kind of just came together. Um, I was at my friend Jake's house, the Hazel Effects, and he has this little uh, synth, like a Korg synth that I just recorded all these little sketches and ideas, and we picked one. 
he added some drums on top of all the layers of synth. Um, and I was just sitting in the back. I was like, can I record this right now? I think I have the hook. Yeah. And we had everything except the verse pretty much ready. And then we just kind of sat on it for two months, did some funky effects on it and stuff. But I really like the lyrics for that because they, they can mean a lot of different things. They're like, they're meta, but they're somehow specific. Uh -huh. That I've really struggled with in the past to like really nail that down. But I think with Floatin', it's a good mix between happy, sad, particular, meta, summery, cold, daytime and night. Yeah. It's a great song. We're not going to yeah. share that one this tonight because I'd like to um, point out some other ones that you've done previously that I've already listened to and I liked. Uh, the next song we're going to listen to is called Daydream. I like this oh, one a lot. Dream. Tell me yeah. about this one. That's that, that's my favorite one on yeah. City Rat, for sure. Um, I couldn't even tell you how that one started, honestly. But I did whip out the acoustic for the first time in years. Um, it's a really interesting chord progression because it's, it's two major seventh chords, a, a step and a half apart, which mm -hmm. really doesn't fit together whatsoever. But right. um, for that reason, when I... I probably started it as like a voice memo or something on my phone. Just the sound of those, the relationship between those two things sounded really nice. And as I added to it, I thought of it as like the first note and then the second one's kind of up here. Just like mm -hmm. how you, I don't know if this will make sense, but when you're daydreaming, you're kind of like up in the world and then you come back and you then you go back. back up and stuff. So I, I try to pick something like that for each song. And then if I ever lose my, my track or whatever, Right. I'll just think of that thing and then go back, you know? Yeah. Um, that song I couldn't really think of lyrics for. And mm -hmm. that's when I was like, Dante, get on the mic right now. And he sang that. And I was like, perfect. Yeah. So I, I, he wrote that, I doubled mine. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and take a listen to Daydream and written by Andrew Chris. <laughs> Dream written by Andrew Chris. That's a really wonderful song. I love yeah, it. I love that one too. Yeah. Especially the end. The um the breakdown. Yeah. I I always love that part the most. And mm -hmm. I had a rap over that part. I had a singing verse over that part because I was like, well, this is the opening, not the intro, because the intro is instrumental. This is like the first time you hear vocals on the album. I should mm -hmm. probably have my voice on it. And after like months and months of trial and error, I ended up using a harmonica mic and I uh -huh. just like hummed and rolled my tongue with a rotating speaker 
And that's that's what that random noise is. is that, really. <laughs> I couldn't tell what that was, but now that you've explained it, I'll probably hear that all the time now. That's funny. Yeah. No, I used to do that to be annoying in, like, elementary school. I used to just be like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure your teachers loved you. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> tell me a little bit. You have a podcast as well, right? I did, yeah. Tell me a, well, I still do. I haven't done an episode in a while, but... Okay. What What is that about? Tell me a little bit about that. Well, 2020, um, there wasn't much to do, and I just had people over all the time, musicians mm -hmm. and general people I wanted to talk to, and I did one just to kind of test it, and I, I really thought to myself, wow, this, this isn't just recording a conversation that is already probably happening. We got into, like, really interesting things by sitting down and just, let's have a conversation, you know? Conversation. So, yeah, yeah. I'll probably do more. I've just been focused on a lot of other things since COVID has like been back somewhat back to normal. This last year and a half has been a bust. I feel bad for the musicians not being able to perform. You know, have you guys ever thought about doing virtual shows? We did. Yeah, there was a period in early summer of last year. We did mm -hmm. a lot of like Instagram live stuff cool. and whatnot. It kind of got weird when people started charging money for those. Like, uh -huh. I get it, but at the same time, I, I think that's why it kind of died off because everyone wanted to make it like a, a paid thing. Profitable. Yeah, yeah. You're not the first musician I've heard say that. So, yeah. you know, they were, everybody was on board because they thought it was a great idea. But then when people started, you know, charging and charging and charging, it kind of took the magic out of it. So, yeah. well, we're starting to open it up again. Hopefully you can maybe decide where, you know, where you want to start playing, if you want to keep up with the backyards or if you want to, go on tour or something. Do you have any plans of that someday? Yeah, no, for sure. My my main goal is to play Bonnaroo or something like that. Uh -huh. I've, I've oh never even gosh. been to a music festival, but I really just want to play Bonnaroo. Um, we've, been, we've been trying to look for shows in Pittsburgh, but it was uh -huh. so weird. The moment where people knew that this fall even would be open, right. all of the places were booked for the next like six months. It was Saturated. really crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think we're going to buy like a generator and make our own shows outdoors and bring the backyard to the city. I think people would love that. That's a great yeah. idea. That's yeah. a great idea. Yeah. And that would be the most fun for us. So. Oh, yeah. I kind of like the smaller intimate groups. You know, they appreciate the music more. They actually listen than a crowded bar sometimes. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. 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 I totally agree with that. The last song we're going to talk about that you did. Uh, I enjoyed this one a lot. The Groove. That one just guys. got <laughs> a little beat to it. So tell me about the groove. So I actually do know every step of how this one came to be. This one was very intentional. I randomly found a song by Cream on YouTube that I've never heard before called Meet Me at, Meet Me at the Bottom. Okay. Which they just recorded, I think, in like Stockholm or something. It's, mm -hmm. it's only a live. It was never a studio song. But the second I heard that... I just went to myself, okay, like, this is not fair. It's, it's not fair because they just played, like, three notes. It's, it's just, like, boom, 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 boom. And I really liked that E, G, E thing. So I sat down. Um, the guitar on that, I tried to get as angry sounding as Eric Clapton's, and he always says that he puts his mic far back from the speaker and turns it all the way up. Okay. So... I use this 1949 Dan Electro amp. So like if you turn it on, it's already loud, but it's clean. Okay. As you turn it up, it, it barely gets louder, but it gets really distorted because it's all, all right. like old vacuum tubes and stuff. Crunchy? Does it get kind of... Yeah, it gets really like warm crunchy though. Okay. Um, and that, that's, that whole album, I was obsessed with different fuzzes and different tones with that. But the groove, there's zero pedals on. And it's like the most disgusting sounds just with the amp turned all the way up. That's um, crazy. It was like the hottest day too, I remember. And <laughs> my AC may have not been working or something like that. Or maybe I just opened all, all, up all the windows. I was like, eh, let's just... <laughs> let's go with it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So then um, I had the entire instrumental and then I went back and I wanted to sing kind of like Robert Plant meets Jack White meets Howlin' Wolf or something like that. Yeah. And randomly, one of, one of my collaborators was jamming with us once, and he started singing. 
And I was like, you could sing like that, like raspy blues. Right. And I had no idea. None of us had any idea. So I was like, you're on this song. You're coming over next week and you're recording this. And he blew, like, I like his part way more than mine in that song. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's wonderful. Well, let's take a listen to the group and we'll be back with Andrew right after this. <laughs> written by Andrew Chris. Uh, that's a great song. It's interesting what you told me about the amps and everything. With no pedals, you got those sounds. That's pretty incredible. Great song. Yeah, that, that one always blows my mind. Just the instrumental by itself. I yeah. love it. Yeah. yeah. That one almost didn't make it on the album, actually. Um, Why is that? It was, it, the album was just getting so long, and there were two blues songs right in the middle. The uh -huh. group being one of them, the second one called The Amps. I took The Amps off, and the groove almost didn't make it until my friend Nate sang that. And I was like, this is amazing. I need to yeah. put this out just because now you're a blues singer. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. Good stuff. Great stuff. While we wrap it up a little bit, Andrew, why don't you tell me how people can find you on the internet and what's the best way to download your music or, you know, whatever. Yeah. I mean, home base on Tap TV on YouTube. Um, all my music's up there. Okay. Podcasts are up there. I do a lot of other videos, like the history of music as told by the Gear, called the Evolution of Fuzz. I do some film analysis on there. So definitely go check out everything on On Tap TV. Okay. Um, 
Spotify, Apple Music, anywhere you could possibly get music. All my stuff is on there. Um, on Instagram, I yeah. use the most, Durs.OnTap. Um, which, by the way, I never chose the name Durs. That was in high school when I was applying for jobs. I put right. Durs in my Facebook so <laughs> colleges wouldn't find me. Yeah. So pe- people started calling me that. Um, and <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's my tag on Twitter, everything, Durs.OnTap. That's great. Yep. Wonderful. Um, let's see. I've got one more thing here. What is the name of your in- your podcast? Just so people know, is I mean, do you, what's the name of it again? Tap Talk. Top Talk. Okay, great. Tap. T A P. Oh, talk. Tap. Okay, I thought you were saying Top Talk. talk. Yeah, like on Tap. Okay. Tap Talk. I got that. So I'll tell you what we'll do is we will share all of our links on our website so people can contact you. How about booking information? Should somebody want to book you guys? Yep. Andrew Chris music at gmail.com or just I'll most likely see it even more if you just DM me on Insta, but Gmail's there. Insta's there. Okay. Meet me at the point in Pittsburgh. I'm usually there on my bike. So Wonderful. Again, that first song was great. Well, everybody, I want to um, thank you for tuning in and listening to Andrew Chris this month for August. Um, it's been a privilege to meet you and talk to you about your, your gifts because you're multifaceted in many ways. So great job. Keep up the good work. Anytime you get new music, send it my way and I'll make sure to share it with on our page. Thanks. I, re- I really appreciate you having me on and everything. It was so great to talk to you. It's been a pleasure. We'll talk yeah. to you soon. Everybody, right. thank you and have a good night. You've been listening to the Indie Music Room with Heather Kelly. Be sure to listen every Saturday and Sunday right here on FortDodgeRadio.com and subscribe for all our past and upcoming shows. The Indie Music Room is a production of FortDodgeRadio.com.